Hi everyone, I'm Ibrahim Mulke from YouTube API Developer Relations Team and joining me today, Roman Nurik from Android API Developer hey Relations Team. How's it going? And today, as you guys already figured out, we'll talk about a YouTube API integration with Android. And it will be like an Android app. We just open source YouTube Direct Lite Android app and we'll talk about the design principles going on with it as well as the YouTube APIs we used and YouTube Direct Lite. So maybe let's get it started. What is YouTube Direct Lite? As you guys like always asking in the Stack Overflow, you asked about how, we, how I can actually get uh, videos from other people. How can I let other people upload videos to my account? Actually, for the privacy issues, we don't actually want you to share your password or share your YouTube account and let everyone upload into your YouTube channel. So rather than that, we just like created YouTube Direct Lite. What YouTube Direct Lite is, Let's you people let people upload to their own channel, but sends a notification to your uh, uh, for your playlist, so that you can moderate a playlist and you can approve which videos you want to be on your playlist. So once they upload it, they actually come to a pending a moderation playlist, and you approve any video you want, and they actually come to the real playlist you want to show them off. So this way, you have like a first season moderation before they go public. And for this one, we also want to create an app, and a mobile app. This way, we actually started with the YouTube Direct Lite Android project. And so at the, as, a, as a separate from the project, we actually want to govern the best YouTube API use cases as well as the best YouTube uh, Android design cases so that you, ca you guys can use as a reference project. All this project is open sourced in GitHub, GitHub slash YouTube slash YTD dash Android. And you guys like are feel free to contribute back as well as customize it and use it for your own use case. Like the use cases could be you could actually re request your fans to upload videos for your website or your service as well as you can create like a YouTube competition and let people upload the best videos and you can just moderate it and show it in your site. So let's get started maybe. I'll just show you a little bit demo if we can show up the screen. So in the first uh, menu we actually have the YouTube auth authentication. It actually requests both from the YouTube to manage my YouTube account as well as my Google Plus account. We'll actually talk about why, which APIs are we using and why we are using them. And starting with that, we actually will approve for the authorization is the OAuth 2 flow. And once I'm actually authorized, it will start showing all my videos, previously videos, and bear me with that, there are like some funny videos inside. And so I have like three basic options here. One option is I can easily send any of my pre-YouTube pre videos here. I can select any of them. I can let them play. And once they are actually played, and I'm, I want to really show that video, bear with me, there's like a little bit slow internet here. I can actually send them to YouTube. So yeah, the video already started playing. And when I actually send it to like a, that playlist, I can submit, and the video is already submitted to that playlist I want to submit. I actually, in this one, I created like a constant uh, Java, uh, files so you can actually click put your to file list you can burn in the playlist id you want to send and all the sub submissions go to that playlist the second one you can actually uh, use any of the pre-recorded videos a we have like my, some uh, videos my own videos in okay <laughs> great and you start upload and actually there's an already upload started and we can actually track the process if there was like a longer video will like show the process better or as a third option you can even start recording a video from scratch you can have a nice video and maybe yeah show ah. yeah <laughs> let's show some like us awesome, um, and you know maybe the cameras were not enough so we used android camera as well <laughs> and i'll just actually let it like flow a little bit so we can see the progress bar working for real we'll have like a, a record a little bit longer video and uh, for with that to explain we use like uh, there are three use cases first one you can submit one of your already uploaded youtube to uh, videos to the submission 
you can record a, an exist you can record a new video as well as you can send any of your uh, uh, recorded videos from your Android device and they will all be sent to the YouTube so if, by using that we use like either YouTube uploading or we just put an extra tag for it so that YouTube the direct light knows which upload which playlist it will actually send the video I think that's enough almost like a one minute yeah let's try to send this video and we can always show it the video and we already started so as you see we have like a notification bar here it actually starts saying that the initiation is completed it will show us the progress and once it's done we will actually be able to see and as an another reminder once the video is already processed we will have a nice notification saying that your video is ready you can just go and watch your video now I'm on my own video manager on my account and I see actually have my rejected YTR submissions as well as my real playlist that I want to actually send my videos on it has three videos some of my videos before that I shared before and I will actually go to my moderation tool my moderation is also in AppSpot ytdirectlight.appspot.com slash static dash mean slash admin html from there I will actually I already logged in with my own account and I see my playlist and when I actually go I actually see those three videos they were already approved as well as the pending video that I just submitted so all I need to do is actually approve the video and once they approve it it will actually go to success and I will be able to see the video already in my playlist and if I go back to my own video here to my playlist I see that it's already uploaded on my playlist here it was like the YouTube direct light app and by saying that I will hand off the Roman Nureke to talk about the design principles we use because this app was like really ugly when I first take it to Roman and <laughs> Roman helped me a lot and let's see what it does so. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the design of this app. So um, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about here. Uh, the first is that um, the most important part of this app is that there's a single primary general flow, right? You have some sort of video content or you want to record that video content um, and then you want to take it into kind of a staging or preview area and then from there you want to upload that video that you've kind of chosen or taken. Um, and then uh, from there, it basically just kind of all the additional interaction uh, goes through the notification, uh, the, the status bar notification. So um, there's a couple of ways you could do this, right? Uh, the first thing to note is actually that there's uh, three different ways to ingest video. Uh, you can choose from an existing YouTube video um, that's in your account. You can pick an item from your gallery, basically um, a video that you've previously recorded kind of just on the phone without uploading anywhere or you can record on the fly. So in the original version of this app, I remember that you had kind of two or three big buttons, um, and those buttons were pick a video, or um, choose from gallery, or record. So um, the issue with, with just kind of immediately throwing the user into a place where they just have three big buttons is that they then immediately have to make a decision, and it's, it's kind of very static. Um, it's also very hard from a, um, from a design standpoint to make that look really good without um, I guess compromising you know basic visual design principles like use of white space and things like that so um, one of the things that we decided to do was let's take the most common uh, or potentially most common um, form of input one of the most common form of uh, ingestion techniques um, and make that you know immediately available right you know as soon as you open the app so as soon as you open the app you see your list of uh, existing uploads on YouTube um, and that's basically kind of your your number one um, your number one kind of uh, ingestion option. Um, if you don't you know really want to choose something that you've already uploaded, you basically have the additional options, which are kind of the uh, you know maybe twenty percent use case or uh, maybe fifteen percent use case or something like that. You have those as an additional options along the bottom, or you know if you were to do this in your own app, you could put this as an action at the top right of the screen in the action bar. 
So, and then the nice thing about this is that no matter which ingestion technique you choose, um, you basically uh, get thrown into the same preview flow. Uh, you get that same big preview view, uh, and then with that button, like upload to YouTube Direct Light. Um, and from there, the same thing happens. So it's very you know, immediately obvious to the user what's going on. Um, so a couple of interesting things we did here, in addition to you know, obviously changing around the overall flow. Um, first, we, we spent a lot of time uh, with uh, you know, the visuals. Obviously, you know, we're using interesting things like typography. We're using Roboto Light here. We're using Roboto Condensed in a couple of areas. Uh, we're using um, Roboto Condensed uh, bold all caps, I believe, as the um, I guess as the captions for these buttons, and that follows some of the standard uh, hollow design aesthetic um, that you would see in in other system apps. Um, we are also employing uh, some responsive design techniques, um, so it actually uh, it lives a little better on the Nexus Seven. Um, but the difference between here, this screen on Nexus 7 and say Nexus 4, is that on Nexus 7 you'd have a two column grid, uh, or in this case on a Nexus 10 you have a two column grid. Um, probably here you could even do more, like a four column grid or something. Um, but on a Nexus 4 it's a single column list. And that helps uh, mitigate some of the white space issues that you would run into. So for example, if you had just shown a list on a Nexus 10 in landscape, you'd notice that like things were very, very long and incredibly strange aspect ratios. So um, using kind of a multi-column grid on, um, on tablets can help you kind of uh, have a much better responsively designed app. So outside of that, we also um, use the standard metrics. Um, on Android, so like you know, there's the standard 48 dp rhythm and the 16 dip margins. So you'll notice that you know the margins almost everywhere along this left edge are 16 dips. The spacing throughout is using 16 dips or 8 dips or 4 dips. That's kind of the standard uh, spacing model that we use. And also uh, the iconography. So originally we had very big, you know, <laughs> colorful uh, gradienty buttons. Uh, and we switched to a more uh, muted, subdued, uh, flatter style for the icons. So you notice here that the gallery icon is you know, a very uh, standard gallery icon. It's very uh, flat using the standard, um, I think it's the uh, hollow light action bar style. Um, and then for the record, which uh, record is very often associated with the color red, yeah. we decided to give it a slightly different treatment. Uh, the interesting thing about the design aspects here is that uh, we actually, for these icons, we didn't have to go into Photoshop or anything. We just used the Android Asset Studio. We went into the generic icons generator. Uh, we plugged in which icons from a set of clip art that we wanted, uh, gave it the color that we needed, and just exported them to all the different densities. So uh, a lot of this we didn't really need to do any sort of special Photoshop work for. Um, we we just you know kind of did the design in the XML editor, in the layout editor in Android Studio. Um, actually, it was in Eclipse, right? Yeah, it was, it was an Eclipse, yeah. Yeah, so we did the design in the uh, Eclipse uh, ADT uh, plugin. Um, and then all the icons were from the Android Asset Studio. Uh, and yeah, so like overall, the design is you know, it's very straightforward. We use a lot of the you know, uh, solid kind of techniques that we have uh, readily available. Um, yeah, it's overall, uh, it's a solid design for a sample app. It's really good. And actually, plus the design, we also use like a few Android techniques, like here you were actually able to use the notification compat and from there you were able to show our, like progress as well as when the video is ready we were able to show them you know it's ready to watch your video you will click and you would be able to see your video on top we also yeah maybe un uh, Actually, you can really talk wanna, about the compat. really quickly wanted to talk about notification compat. So um, I forgot which uh, API levels the YouTube player supports, um, but notifications. There are some notification features um, that are only available in Android 4.1 or later. So, for example, if you wanted to have additional actions or a like a big image in your notification, uh, you wouldn't be able to use some of those new APIs. Um, so we have this uh, class called Notification Compat. It's in the support library. It basically lets you use some of those newer APIs on any version of Android. So uh, here for the notifications, I believe you use the uh, Notification Compat yeah. class for that. And by also using Notification Compat, a separate thing, when I, when I want to actually start the upload, I didn't want to upload interview with the app. So if the user like anywhere like using the app and starts the upload, and if the user goes out of the app or just like closes the app, I really want to up upload to still continue. 
So I create as an intent service. So actually, the intent service are like the ones that actually using the uh, comp out here. And yeah, like by using that, it was like much lightweight and it was a separate thread basically going the whole Yeah, and process. intent services are great for something like this. Intent services are basically, so service is just something that runs in the background. Um, it's not, it doesn't have a UI. Obviously, right? And, uh, but the service, it actually runs on the same thread as your UI. So if you do nothing with threading uh, and just simply use a service, it'll actually be doing its work on the same thread as your UI, so it can hang your UI. An intent service is actually a very, very nice thing. What it basically does is it spawns a thread um, to do its job. And after its job is done, basically after the on handle intent method is completed, uh, it stops the service. It stops itself. And it, uh, kills the thread. So it's a very nice way and actually uh, also it does queuing built in. So if you uh, call an intent service three times and it's in the middle of doing its first uh, you know task, it'll actually queue up the other two and it'll then you know finish the other two. Uh, after it's done with those it'll then kill itself. So it's a really really great handy class for doing any sort of you know downloading or uploading uh, things like that. It's very good very good class to use. Okay. Thanks, Roman, for going all the design. Now, I actually, I also I want to talk about a little bit of the YouTube APIs we use and how we utilize them. So we basically start with the authentication, as you guys saw. Like it was the OAuth 2. For that, we use the Google OAuth uh, credential. It's a really handy class, so that you don't need to deal with like tokens. You don't need to refresh them, or you don't need to make uh, if there's an exception. The exceptions are like all uh, covered and you're able to hand, uh, handle them like much easier than it was like it was a bare exception. So the OAuth uh, 2 for the Google Auth credential was like easy to go through the OAuth 2 as well as if there's an exception like play service is not available, it will be able to understand that or if there's like something like a recoverable ex ex exception, like maybe you are just like uh, lose your like authorization, it will actually pop up an if screen, it will be the Android's own auto authorization screen that will show up and you will be just e able to go through it without any error. It's like way cleaner. It actually helped like clean half of my code basically. It was just authentication but it was like a really big deal and uh, I definitely suggest to use Google Auth cre account credential for that. And on top of that we use like resumable uploads. Resumable uploads is actually in the data API which lets you do the upload piece by piece if, uh, if the upload fails in the try so that your upload can start where it was left off in a, like a really closer to place where it was left off rather than going all the way back and doing the from starting from the uh, old scratch. If you are like uploading a big file it's super handy even if you upload a smaller file it's actually like a really good approach to do the uploads and I actually use the normal Java resumable uploads use the Java library for it and just plugged into Android and everything worked perfect. In the uploads, we actually use like a pod processing. What we do actually using data API, once we start uploading with an exponential back off we kind of introduced, we just keep a, a pod the processing status. And when the, once the video is ready, then we just show that you can now watch your video. We just throw another uh, progress notification using notification compat. We definitely use a lot of like the data API here just to actually grab your own videos from your uploads playlist and when you're actually uploading it's like a data API as well and the actual YouTube direct live submission is basically just like actually adding like a new tag adding the playlist YouTube direct light dash playlist ID kind of tag so once you upload we actually understand which playlist you want to su submit those videos and it was like a data API we use a little bit on the uh, Google Plus API so that uh, from the Google Plus we really want to see uh, who you are and we really want to actually show actually who you are and we really under we really want to show that we understand you actually we know who you are and we want to make sure that actually you are the right user to send that you are not using someone's account. In that we actually grab your profile picture from Google Plus as, as your identity. And if you just like, go back to demo a little bit, and on the demo, which you can see actually there are like Google Plus share buttons, the Google Plus one buttons. And so once you, uh, I actually went here, 
And in the meantime, I actually reminded one thing that I should have said before. So when you actually click the Google Plus, you can actually publicly share the button, or you can just undo it. As an Android, actually, I, I just like forgot to tell before, we also use the up navigation. So okay. when you are in any of the pages and you are like reviewing, you want to go back, rather than always using the, the normal uh, back button, you actually have like a really nice up navigation. So it will take you to the home screen. You create like a navigation tree for that. And so your actually activity knows like which app to back, back over once your yeah, activity is. And, and actually, it used to be very difficult to implement up. Well, not really difficult, but it used to require a lot of effort to implement up correctly. But now, literally, with just a couple of you know additional things in your manifest, you can basically say that this preview activity, the kind of the staging area, as I call it, this preview activity, its parent activity is the home activity. So then Android knows that when the user uh, presses the up button, it basically reads that manifest and says, hey, I want to be taken to the home activity, and it will just do all that for you. In the past, you'd have to actually uh, implement the on options item selected call, and uh, that was just too much work. So we, we much, uh, very much simplified that, and this uses it quite well. Glad that's so simple. It took me like five minutes, and yeah. I really enjoyed that. And also, we use the Android Player API to play those videos, Android Player SDK so that we don't need to create like a whole new uh, UI view for that. Just using the player, we just like customize a little bit and the player stuff and how to handle the, all the uh, actions on it. Like we can go all the way to full screen and we're able to watch the video from the full screen where it was left off and going back and we're actually taking just like submit from there. And this, uh, this preview or staging area, yeah. um, it supports both the video view for things like you know stuff that was taken from your camera or the gallery, or the YouTube player API, exactly. which, uh, which is for something that you chose from that grid in the beginning. Yeah, so we really want to make like a complete, like a, a similar interface for both of them. So you actually understand that this is the second step. You are not like in any, you are not like uh, lost in it, which step you are. Mm -hmm. You really know there is a main step that you can use. Choose like either record, pick any of your existing videos or like play. And in the second step, you just approve it and you actually comes to the main stage and it will just tell you that your video is either uploading or it's already sub submitted. And I guess that was all about like the YouTube Android uh, Light app and YouTube Direct Light for Android app. And thanks a lot for joining me today, Roman. Yeah, glad and I think help. we always want to plug that as a developer relations team, both YouTube and Android, we are hiring almost everywhere in the world. Always hiring. <laughs> always hiring. I hope you join us. And to remind again, you can always apply from developer.google.com slash jobs. As well as, I just want to remind the uh, our open source project is github.com slash YouTube. It's the YouTube repository slash ytd-android and thanks for joining us guys Ibrahim Luke and Roman Norik from New York see you guys